may I invite everyone to direct your attention to your right as we witness the parade of Bidzaizen, gallants and powerful ships. Warships are symbols of naval diplomacy, national power, and pride. Naval reviews are occasions where navies display their fleets in the presence of heads of state, dignitaries, and foreign guests. Naval reviews have a long, well-documented history, stretching back to the medieval era in Europe. The British Royal Navy has often conducted naval reviews originally as part of the mobilization for war, later in observance of the royal anniversaries and significant occasions. Approaching before you is the BRP Jose Rizal, FF-150, skippered by Captain Jerry Y. Garrido, Philippine Navy. BRP Jose Rizal, FF-150, was named in honor of our national hero, Jose Rizal. It is the lead ship of her class of guided missile frigates of the Philippine Navy. Likewise, may I request our guests of honor together with the Chief of Staff AFP and the Flag Officer in Command to please stand for the fleet review. It performs the opening pass. BRP Jose Rizal FF-150 is the first missile-capable frigate of the service, as its major warships were mostly transferred from other navies and reclassified as frigates. She is also one of the service's primary warships, able to conduct multi-role operations such as coastal patrol and anti-submarine warfare. BRP Davao del Sur LD602, skippered by Commander Elmer G. Torriado, Philippine Navy, is the second ship of the Tarlac-class landing platform dock of the Philippine Navy. She is the second ship to be named after the Philippine province of Davao del Sur. She was launched on 29 September 2016 and was commissioned into service on 31 May 2017. She has been part of various missions that help us build diplomatic relations with other foreign navies, such as the Rim of the Pacific in 2018 and the Russia's Navy Day festivities. Moreover, she has also been part of the government's humanitarian assistance and disaster risk response through the repatriation of the stranded Filipinos in Oman. Passing in front of you is BRP Ramon Alcaraz, PS-16, skippered by Commander Lemar R. de la Calzada, Philippine Navy. It is the second ship of the Gregorio del Pilar class offshore patrol vessels of the Philippine Navy. She is named after Commodore Ramon Alcaraz, a Filipino naval officer and a World War II hero, best known for receiving a silver star for heroism and gallantry during World War II. As part of the Navy's expanded roles, PS-16 has immensely contributed to the rescue and relief operations along with landing dock BRP Davao del Sur. The BRP Emilio Jacinto PS-35 skipper by Commander Dominic M. Tulen, Philippine Navy, is the lead ship of the three Jacinto class of corvettes and is considered as one of the most modern ships in the Philippine Navy. She was originally named HMS Peacock P239 during her stint in the Royal Navy. She is currently assigned to the Naval Offshore Combat Force. BRP Emilio Jacinto undertake a number of different roles including seamanship, navigation, and gunnery training. BRP Batak LC299 Skippered by Commander Dexter A. Cagaanan, Philippine Navy, was named after the Batak indigenous people of Northern Palawan. Before you today, LC-299 is carrying the Philippine Army's Simba Fighting Vehicle, a wheel-armored vehicle that can travel a maximum speed of 100 kilometers per hour and has a combat weight of 
2.2 tons, designed for internal security operations route reconnaissance, base security, and convoy or escort missions. In addition, she is also carrying the Philippine Marines Assault Armor Battalion with the Light Armor Vehicle LAV V-150 SD Commando, capable of maneuvering at vantage positions and direct fire support. PRP Abraham Campo PG-396, skippered by Commander Kenneth and Rosalejos Philippine Navy, was named after Lieutenant Abraham Calleja Campo, the navigator of the Q-boat Luzon who was one of those naval officers who portrayed the true picture of human courage and heroism in the titanic struggle in Bataan beyond our countries and complacency in fighting the Japanese. Passing before you is PRP Ang Pangulo, ACS-25, commanded by a female skipper, Commander Marisa Arlene A. Martinez, Philippine Navy General Staff Corps. Carlos P. Garcia, the first president to use it, designated it as the flagship of the Philippine Navy on February 14, 1959. The first presidential engagement held aboard took place on April 7, 1959. And the ship's first mission, a trade and cultural floating exposition with ports of call in Vietnam, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan was carried out from April 19 to June 4, 1959. The vessel has since been extensively used for relief, emergency search and rescue, patrol, auxiliary transport and command vessel purposes in addition to performing its duties to the presidency and the government. The PB-359 headed by Lieutenant Junior Grade Gerald C. Deloy is a fast assault interdiction craft patrol boat. It has an overall length of 65 feet with a cruising speed of 20 knots. As part of the fast boats acquisition project of the Philippine Navy, the rigid hull inflatable boat or rib was attained. These ribs are essential to support the operations of the Philippine Navy's special operations group. The project, which is funded under the Second List Horizon 1 phase, was meant to provide the Navy Special Operations Group Special Boat Unit with new additional boats to complement older fast boats in service, while also increasing its operational capabilities. In connection with today's activity, the Dagit exercise began in 2003 during the term of then Captain Jose Luis Alano of Philippine Navy with the Naval Air Group and 15th Strike Wing as the participating units. The exercise aims to enhance the interoperability and operational capabilities of the Philippine Navy and the Philippine Air Force units in air and naval operations in support to the Unified Command's requirements in the conduct of the internal security operations and in support of the territorial defense operations. Development of naval defense capability. Given the archipelagic nature of the Philippines, the Philippine Navy shall develop its capabilities for naval defense amphibious warfare, sea lift and transport, and surface warfare, naval gunfire support, detection and maritime surveillance, search and rescue, disaster response, as well as capabilities for anti-air, anti-submarine, and mine warfare. Capabilities shall enable the AFP to develop its capabilities for naval defense, conduct amphibious operations for both defense and civilian relief operations defend the Philippine territorial seas, all its internal waters, as well as 200-mile exclusive economic zone from all forms of illegal intrusion or passage, protect all submarine-based lines of domestic and international communication, identify all vessels, and monitor all kinds of surface and submarine passage, 
through Philippine territorial waters. At this juncture, may I direct your attention to the skies as we witness the wing flyby of the Philippine Air Force and the Philippine Navy air assets. At this point, passing before you are the Navy flight composed of the newest AW-159 anti-submarine helicopter, Augusta Westland 109 helicopter, Beechcraft King Air C-90, and the Britain Norman Islanders of the Philippine Navy. The, the Britain Brit Norman Islander with its flight lead commander Noel Stephen M. Marzan is a British light utility aircraft capable of maritime air surveillance, ISR operations, aeromedical evacuation, paradrop and parajump operations, maritime security operations, maritime search and rescue, rapid and needs assessment, and naval gunfire support. The Beechcraft King Air C-90 with its flight lead Commander Zyril S. Villacorta, Philippine Navy, is the Philippine Navy's Skywatch that supports the naval operations through the conduct of ISR missions. Following the naval air assets is the Cessna. Before you is the F SF-260 Marchetti with its flight lead. In front of you is the newly acquired Sikorsky Black Hawk helicopters with its flight lead, Lieutenant Colonel Anthony D. Guillermo, Philippine Air Force. Passing before you is the AW-109 with its flight lead, Lieutenant Commander Augustus Cesar B. Bercades, Philippine Navy General Staff Corps, serve as an effective force multiplier in views of the limited number of surface platform tasks to patrol the Philippines' vast maritime domain. The Philippine Navy AW-159 Wildcat Anti-Submarine Warfare Helicopter with its flight lead, Lieutenant Commander Orlando D. Miranda, Philippine Navy, is the new twin-engine multi-mission military helicopter capable of the autonomous detection and identification of attack and naval targets. There you have it, the dashing and gallant members of the Fleet Review and Wing Flyby Team of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. At this juncture, may we request the Chief of Staff Armed Forces of the Philippines, Lieutenant General Gilbert Italia Gapay, Philippine Army, to introduce this occasion's guest of honor. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and privilege to uh, introduce to you our guest of honor and speaker in today's uh, momentous event, the Fleet Review and Wing Flyby, no less than the Secretary of National Defense, Secretary Delphine Negrillo Lorenzana. Kindly uh, sit down, please. General uh, Gapay, the Chief of Staff. Lieutenant General Gloria, the Vice Chief of Staff. Vice Admiral uh, Macordo, the uh, FOIC, FOIC. Lieutenant General Sabihana, the Philippine Army Commander. Lieutenant General Allen Paredes, the uh, Air Force. Rear Admiral Lomer Benavi, the Fleet Commander. Captain Norman Mucha, the uh, Commanding Officer of PRP Tarlac, LD-601. Other AFD officials, Commanding Officers, Pilots, and crew of the participating assets, officers, and enlisted personnel of PRP Tarlac. Friends from the media, other distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga po. First, I'd like to greet our beloved and esteemed armed forces of the Philippines, a happy 85th founding anniversary. I am honored to represent in our traditional annual fleet review this year, 
our President and Commander-in-Chief, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, who expressed his regrets for being unable to join us today because of prior commitments. Nevertheless, he extends his deepest gratitude and appreciation to our gallant men and women in the AFP who are at the forefront of our nation's battles and struggles. To all AFP personnel, I am one with the President and the Filipino people in thanking and honoring you for keeping our nation together, especially during these extraordinary times. The fleet review that we have witnessed today brought pride and joy to the Filipino people. Watching our different surface assets, such as the new frigate, the BRP Osirisal, <coughs> as well as the rotary and fixed wing and air assets of the naval air wing, while aboard the BRP Tarla, southwest of Morong, Bataan, is a thrilling experience for me. The opener pass of the F 50s of our Philippine Air Force was a sight to behold. Allow me to emphasize that the main purpose of this annual fleet review is to show the Filipino people where their taxes go. More than being a display of the capability and resources of our armed forces, of our force providers, this annual fleet review is ultimately our way of being accountable and transparent to the Philippine people in whom sovereignty resides. Beyond that, this event also shows solidarity among our major services. For the Horizon 2 of the revised AFP modernization program, our aim is to establish minimum credible defense capability. It is focused on territorial defense, maritime security, humanitarian assistance, and disaster response and internal security operations. We at the DND and the EFP exert our best efforts to fast track the implementation of 87 projects amounting to uh, 318 billion pesos, although we only have until 2022 to complete our Horizon 2 modernization list and much of our time, resources and efforts were being di diverted to our COVID-19 containment and recovery efforts, I am positive that we can still accomplish a lot. For 2021, our modern modernization fund is 27 billion pesos. Of this amount, 15 billion pesos will be utilized for our multi-year projects, which include our frigate, combat engineering equipment, and C4I star system. For the Philippine Air Force, we have unmanned aerial vehicles, attack helicopters, radars, and ground-based air defense system. Meanwhile, for the Philippine Army, we are continuing the acquisition of self-propelled Huitzers, which are due for delivery next year. For the Navy, we await the delivery of our second frigate with its missiles and munitions early next year. For the Philippine Air Force, we expect the delivery of additional 10 combat utility Black Hawk helicopters. Another 12 billion pesos has been earmarked for our contracts to acquire light tanks and wheeled armored personal carriers, medium lift aircraft and heavy lift helicopters and fast craft interdiction missile. I have enumerated our acquisition list for next year in the spirit of transparency. We want the Filipino people to know that we are constantly improving the AFP, both in personnel and equipment, precisely because the Filipino people deserves no less. For our way forward, the Defense Department shall persistently pursue the acquisition of defense equipment that is necessary for the AFP to perform its mandate and accomplish its mission. Aside from the Horizon 2 projects that I have mentioned earlier, we shall also prioritize the acquisition of platforms to realize our goal to have a minimum credible defense posture. As our men and women in the armed forces of the Philippines reaffirm their commitment towards keeping our country and people safe and secure in meaningful celebration of their 
85th anniversary, I wish to thank the President and Commander-in-Chief for his genuine concern and all-out support for the morale and welfare of our soldiers and their families. Let me also thank our honorable legislators who champion our advocacy to increase our defense budget to at least 2% of our GDP among our other related legislative initiatives. To the modernization enthusiasts out there, people who support us, thank you for helping us push for, push for the modernization and capability upgrade of the IEP. Likewise, we thank the other government agencies, both national and local levels, and the private sector for closely working with us in implementing our whole of nation strategy towards winning the peace, security, and inclusive development of our country. Lastly, I thank our countrymen and women for your overwhelming trust and confidence in the AFP, the true patriots and defenders of the Filipino people. Mabuhay ang AFP, mabuhay ang Republika ng Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po. We shall now proceed to the photo opportunity. May we request our honoree together with the flag officer in command, the Chief of Staff Armed Forces of the Philippines, to proceed in front, sir. Also, request major service commanders to proceed in front, sir.